Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the moon. I'm your host for this evening, Lawrence Ray. And today I'm joined by my esteemed co-host, Ricardo Martinez, and a new co-host, Matt Arborg, who um, deals with uh, statistics a bit, Rayfield, head of statistics. Um, and no Jerry, as he's currently unwell. But um, today we are interviewing Chris and Nicholas from Galloy, uh, the Bitcoin banking service for uh, companies and communities uh, and they're also uh, helping with organizing the adapting bitcoin conference in el salvador from the 16th to the 18th of november how are you guys doing today doing great doing good thank you awesome i'm glad to you hear already it. know the date of the adapting bitcoin conference damn right i do and i made sure to drop it in right at the very beginning so that if anyone's thinking <laughs> of going <laughs> then uh, they know when it is and they know where it is el salvador and you can find out more online just type in adopting bitcoin conference on, on google um but yeah i um as anybody knows i'm wearing a bitcoin hat today i purchased it because i felt bad i went to a bitcoin store uh today and it looks really flashy on the outside it was in spain and um i uh, went up i said oh how much is it? i thought i'll buy some bitcoin while i'm here i know it'll be expensive but and it was like six percent was the rate which i thought was pretty astonishingly expensive um so i said okay well i'll buy this hat because you know i was like can i pay with lightning and it's like no really okay fine can i pay with on chain no what can I pay with? Cash. Brilliant. Okay, fantastic. Very, uh, very Bitcoin. So I was a very unimpressive uh, first experience of a Bitcoin shop today. But um, there you go. But anyway, enough about me. I um, just thought it was kind of funny that I've been to a Bitcoin shop that doesn't accept Bitcoin. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, you guys, I just wanted to kick off the podcast with a quick question. Um, Galloy, uh, what, how, how did you guys end up working on the project that it is and, and how did this come together and start from your perspectives uh, as individuals? Yes, yeah, so the idea of Galloy is that today there is a lot of uh, banking solution for fiat. Uh, so if you want to, you know, if you're, uh, you want to have your credit union, you can go to see a company and they will have of the shelf software to, you know, core banking system as we call them. Uh, the idea of Galloy is that if you want to do the same thing for Bitcoin, like, and you want to have your own Bitcoin bank, you know, today there is no solution that you can just, you know, hey, I will use this and then I will have my, my Bitcoin bank. And so the, um, basically we think that, you know, Bitcoin is money and uh, to have the proper status of Bitcoin is money, you need to have Bitcoin bank basically to be able to scale adoption. Um, and yeah, so our goal is to scale banking for Bitcoin. And the Bitcoin Beach wallet is, maybe something we want to talk about, maybe I'm <laughs> diving too quickly, but it's basically a proof of concept to show that yeah, you can, you can use Bitcoin as, a, uh, as a money and it works. And you know, this is no, no, El Salvador is on the Bitcoin standard, so. Yeah, just to build on what Nicholas has said is, you know, Bitcoin's, you know, almost 13 years old now. It's on this journey and evolution from what has largely been a speculative asset. It's only now emerging um, as a store of value or, or digital gold. And it's, it's still very early days for that narrative. And it eventually will become, you know, broadly used media of exchange. So we're, we're skating to where the puck is going and building for, for what's yet to come, right? In terms of making it easy to use Bitcoin um, for payments. And the broader, you know, context for our business is we don't want to be the bank, right? We want to make it, we just want to be an infrastructure company to make it easy for any community or institution around the world to set up their own bank. And, and like Nicholas said, our, our first proof of concept is what we've done with the Bitcoin Beach Wallet. So we can talk about that and how, how we expect our business to evolve in the years ahead. Yeah, I appreciate that. And that gives like a bit more um, understanding. I guess that the quick question here is like, hey, um, you guys come together as a company and, and obviously are focused on institutions and et cetera. How, how, wh why El Salvador? Why Bitcoin Beach is, is the first question. Was it because of strike or, or what's, the, what's the situation there? Like how, how did that come about? Yeah, in... Early 2020. Um, so initially, the first question that come to mind: Okay, you want to build a, a Bitcoin banking solution, right? So the, now the question is: Where do you want to launch? Uh, which uh, jurisdiction? And the first, I guess, tentative market was the US. So um, uh, when we created Gallery, we were thinking: Okay, uh, you know, is the US a good place to launch for? We really focus on payment, you know, lightning payment, right? Um, the after digging into it, you know, because every transaction on Bitcoin in the US, you know, you, you need to have a tax treatment out of it, whether it's capital gain or capital loss. 
And also in every state you launch, you need to have money transmitter, you need to have MTL. Um, so a license to operate in this state. And you know, there is 50 states and many of them require like a lengthy process to have a license. Uh, some of them don't need license, but most do. And you basically think that, okay, like you want to show that you can pay with Bitcoin or you can have like, we really use Bitcoin as a bank and plug in on top of Lightning. But the jurisdiction in the US is not friendly to basically use Bitcoin to pay stuff. Um, um, so we really underst understood that no, the US is will probably a lagger in using Bitcoin as payment, uh, not, not a, a, a pioneer. Um, and then the question become, okay, if not the US, where? <laughs> and the idea was to find a country which has, you know, car say six that will favor the use of lightning. Uh, why El Salvador? It's because it's a country that is very unbanked. So 70%, at least pre-Bitcoin, 70% um, of the population didn't have a bank account, um, meaning, you know, they do cash for everything. Um, and another aspect of why Salvador, it's a very, like, I believe 25% of the country is, uh, GDP of the country is, is from remittance. So like there's a lot of money coming in and when it's coming from another country, obviously remittance, there is like high friction and, and fees. And so it's another uh, relevant, in, um, I guess, uh, point. The last point is that because El Salvador is using the US um, D, Basically, the government doesn't have a printing press. Uh, this, in turn, means that they are not opposed to Bitcoin. You know, they might actually be fairly friendly to it, um, unlike like a country that would be sovereign for the currency, right? Whereas they might see uh, Bitcoin more as a threat. El Salvador already, you know, was using the currency of someone else uh, in the first place, and so, and as a, as a, as a result of this, the regulation in El Salvador was fairly. I would guess at the time, neutral to Bitcoin, like uh, um, general crypto, like there was basically there was no law about it. And the result is that you could do what you want, right? Like you, they are not preventing you to do anything. Um, and so we could experiment, you know, in a fairly free way. Um, and so basically we start working on, yeah, the Bitcoin Beach wallet, uh, I would say, yeah, uh, May, June, 2020, um, you know, with the Bitcoin Beach community. Uh, and for, for the record, like we, we really were there like probably nine to 12 months before strike came to us. Did you have this uh, vision or were there like seeds or hints that the government El Salvador was going to be heading in this Bitcoin direction when you when you first came to El Salvador, or did you literally just come because you uh, you recognize the relative lack of of laws around Bitcoin and you you saw it as this kind of sandbox, uh, but maybe you didn't you didn't have this kind of like prescient vision of the of the government actually adopting it full on. I mean, it's more the later, uh, but we were joking, you know, like I don't know nine months ago. That hey, you know, let's put El Salvador as being the first country on the Bitcoin standard. But when we were discussing about it, it was really as a joke, like as you know, a dream. Uh, the idea is that this will come to fruit, you know, to, to fruition as soon as now, as soon as like mid 2021 was not something we were expecting. And when it comes to like the guys like um, Jorge and Roman, like how did you come across these guys? Like how how because obviously. There's a few different, I'm sure there's different community projects in El Salvador, there's different beaches in El Salvador, as El Tunco, for example, like the, the famous one for surfing. Like, how did it come across to, to go with these guys specifically and, and this project specifically? Like, did they, did they kind of speak to you or like, how, how did that come about? Yeah, so the so initial touch point was, um, so Mike Peterson, uh, he went on a podcast called Tales from the Crypt, um, early 2020. And, you know, this is where I said, okay, that's interesting. You know, there is a community that is doing Bitcoin payments in El Salvador. And for me, all the arguments are relevant. And this is, 
basically after the podcast, I just send him a mail and say, hey, you know, you can, we can help you um, maybe build your own wallet. Uh, prior to that, the committee was using first blockchain.com and then wallet of Satoshi. Um, blockchain.com doesn't work because on-chain payment doesn't work for payment, uh, like for small payments uh, for, for many reasons. That's, that's transaction and things like that. Um, and uh, then, you know, the move to Lightning was very helpful with Wallet of Satoshi. The challenge is that, okay, it's Wallet Satoshi is a wallet that is very generic. Uh, you know, it's not for a particular community. So then when there is question on the support or, you know, uh, it's hard to really help people on the ground, right? You need to send an email to someone in, in Australia. And for a lot of the people on the ground, that was, uh, that was a good solution, but the idea of having your own wallet where you can have a lot more insights and you can do a lot more support to it was very appealing. So this is how it came to, came to be. Yeah, and I'll, I'll jump in here to give to kind of tie this to the broader Bitcoin and Lightning development. You know, as Nicholas said, we started building the wallet in the spring of 2020, even before we had engagement with the Bitcoin Beach community. And in late spring, early summer of 2020, we went to all the, the top VCs, venture capitalists, a lot of whom understand Bitcoin. And at that point, we had published our thesis where, you know, we compare Bitcoin to Fedwire, not Bitcoin to Visa, as a lot of people erroneously do. And our, our thesis was very well received and kind of the universal feedback we got from investors. And there's a point to this story is that, number one, we love you and Nicholas as a team. Number two, we totally believe your thesis in terms of Bitcoin should be compared to Fedwire as a base layer, and we're going to build all these innovative layers on top of it in the decades ahead. And we totally think you guys are spot on in terms of how the world's going to evolve. And point number three, they all said we're not giving you a single dollar because they all thought we were five years too early, right? And most most VCs, I think, are actually poor at their job. And you know, we've got a lot of VCs on our cap table who I told this directly to their faces, like they, they're they're largely lemmings, right? And they're not willing to take asymmetric bets. So in, in summer of 2020, we raised no money. And under Nicholas's leadership, he's the one who said, hey, let's just cold call Mike Peterson, this guy who we read about in Forbes magazine. And we approached him in August of 2020. And that's kind of how it all came together, because we wanted to prove that this stuff is not five years too early, right? Which literally only 18 months ago, that's what all the venture investors were telling us. And now we've had this Cambrian explosion of, of our company and other companies building on Lightning in a very short period of time, which, you know, in hindsight, it all seems kind of obvious, but even as, as recent as last year, you know, we were not getting any real support. And so Nicholas said, hey, let's go to Mike, let's build for this community, let's get real feedback from the community and things kind of took a life of their own from there. Now that we're uh, two months into the legal tender law, how are the people in El Salvador responding to the idea of Bitcoin and um, it being legal tender? I think pretty good of all. Um the usage of the, 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 the should we trust the metric i'm not sure but you know the usage of the chivo wallet seems to be very fairly high like it seems there is 15 percent of the population that is using uh, the chivo wallet on a i don't know if it's a daily basis or weekly or monthly basis but uh, if you think about it right it's already mean you know 50 percent of six million it's close to a million people using Bitcoin, uh, which is great. Um, I didn't expect it from the beginning, from day one to have so many merchants that accept Lightning. Like from day one, we had McDonald's and we have Pizza Hut and you know, a lot of those company. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of the international company was accepting Lightning, which is, which is great because now it's like, it's there is a fear of like if company don't integrate you know bitcoin uh, you know maybe they would miss out on some uh, clients that you know they see value with bitcoin and they want to use it more and i think it's going the right direction more. when you guys say bitcoin bank do you ever envision like a role for bitcoin based notes um i've, I've heard a lot of people throw around like cryptographic notes that are backed by bitcoin to have like a cash aspect of it do you guys see a role for that like a ring signature where like the transaction will be private inside the wallet? No, like a physical paper note that has like a QR code where you can audit that it's backed, uh, you know, by Bitcoin in like a hardware wallet or somewhere. Like a physical QR code, interesting. How, how will you, so like you print one, like 
Well, no, my question I, is I don't know what I'm interesting to see how okay, you well, like, like Hal Finney's <laughs> idea. Hal Finney's idea of a Bitcoin bank was that there would be banks that issue their own currencies, but they use Bitcoin as like the reserve that backs yeah, each I, note. I think I, I was wondering if you guys I mean, see like a cash, a ca like a Bitcoin based cash note, like being issued by any of these Bitcoin banks that you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a natural evolution, right? I mean, let's just take it one step at a time. I mean, there's no reason why JP Morgan today couldn't or offer its own version of JP US dollar, right? I mean, that's that's effect effectively what they're doing through the fractional reserve system. system. And so it's, you know, a natural evolution to think in a similar direction in, in the context of Bitcoin, except there's one awesome different aspect of Bitcoin, which is you can cryptographically prove whether you have the reserves or not, which JP Morgan and no other conventional bank I mean, you know, they're, they're not able to do that and probably never will be able to do that. And so, I mean, we, we've thought more about, and Nicholas can speak to the, the, the technicals here, you know, we've certainly given deep thought to, you know, what, what does it mean to have cryptographic proof of reserve, right? And do away with a lot of the regulatory need and insurance burden that exists in the traditional financial system, you know, to prevent bank collapses because you can just prove on Bitcoin, on a Bitcoin bank, whether you have the money or not. Um, haven't really thought about this kind of paper-based version that you have, but to have a digital-based version where you say, look, we're a bank, we have this amount of money, we're going to fractionalize X amount in order to extend credit effectively into the system. You know, that's a, an easy evolution to think about. Yeah, and th there is some initiative by uh, Blockstream, I believe, uh, or someone uh, sponsored by Blockstream that they're trying to do a, ch a Chumyan bank and the idea of it is that you get like a, a Bitcoin bank and there is, you know, some Bitcoin into it. And maybe it's, there is also a lightning channel, or like a lightning node and you can send payment to and from lightning. And the idea is that inside the bank system, like there is privacy where you don't know when someone is sending money to who and how much. Um, this is not something we are actually pushing like it's a very private you know like where you you trust that the bank you know they will own the money but then you don't know how the money is evolving as part of this uh, bank there will be actually a presentation at adopting bitcoin about this uh it's like i guess the concept of being here for like 20 years but it has never been implemented in the concept of a bitcoin bank uh, for, for me i see that as an interesting experiment uh, but as part of gallery this is not something we are uh, pushing you guys aren't looking to make some bitcoin cash but i'm sorry uh that's <laughs> the joke uh <laughs> but, sorry, but, but uh, you know i mean i i don't know if introducing paper when it's interesting i mean you know because then you have all the how, how do you prove that you know it's the early paper that is, has not been duplicated and things like that you know you, you bring back the authenticity issue that bitcoin solves so i i've never thought about bitcoin paper printed stuff but like yeah i guess you'd maybe have a qr that you could like have an app so you just scan to make sure it's authentic but then it's kind of like yeah i guess that's probably what, what he's thinking right um yeah yeah but if you duplicate the paper or like i mean it's a problem with all this printed stuff is that how do you prove that there is only one you can't yeah that's count, true so. that's a very good point yeah I, I have a question um like uh where do you guys see your first big client coming from if you haven't already got it? I don't know if you mentioned that yet or not, but do you see it coming from a big company, from some sort of government? Would it be a national government, maybe a local government, a community type thing? Um, do you think it'll be in El Salvador or do you think it'll be outside of El Salvador? Um, what are your thoughts on where, where's your, where's your, where are you going to make your money, do you think? Yeah, I mean, Nicholas, maybe I'll set some context here, and then you can talk about some of the specific entities that we're already engaged with. And so, you know, this gets to our business where, again, we don't want to be the bank, right? We just want to be the leading B2B infrastructure provider to make it easy for anybody around the world to bank. And, you know, there's a couple of core, core points to the thesis that we have. One is Bitcoin has already won the battle to be money over IP. Number two, just like SaaS has transformed the world in the last 15 years, where you know, the easy example I give my normie friends is, you know, 20 years ago, if you wanted to stand up a software business, you know, it was very expensive and cumbersome. You had to buy servers, physically host them on-prem, hire your own software engineers. Today with AWS or GCP, it's very different to push a button and spend a couple hundred bucks, you're in business in an hour. Something similar, analogous will happen with 
you know, Bitcoin banking as a service on this open source money. And we want to be the leading provider, just like AWS, to make it easy for people to stand up their own bank with a push of a button. So that's point number two. And, and I'm leading to, to a, a clear conclusion here. And then point number three is this is not just for companies, right? Like JP Morgan will come to us at some point in the years ahead and probably white label our solution and represent it as their own and will serve traditional banks, but also companies are becoming banks today, right? Apple and Starbucks are pure financial institutions at this point, even though most people on the street would never think of them as such. We will serve sophisticated companies like Apple and Starbucks, but you know, this is not just for companies. A company is just, you know, a congregation of people assembled together for profit. This is also for communities, right? We've already proven this with a town of 3,000 people who live on the Pacific coast of El Salvador, but it could be for your church or your temple or your mosque or a tennis league you play in every Tuesday night with 80 other people, right? Or your town, wherever in the world you may live. The insight being is, you know, this banking solution will be for any community, whether it's for profit or otherwise. And I'm, I'm certainly not suggesting every community should set up their own bank, but we want to enable that possibility. And the world is going to evolve in ways that most people can't imagine because of this open source money enables possibilities, not just for companies at one extreme end of the spectrum, but also nonprofit communities at the other. There's all kinds of variations along that spectrum. And then there's an outlier to the spectrum, which is governments, right? 12 years into this experiment with non-sovereign digital money, we already have sovereign nation states adopting and coming to us to explore adoption of taking this non-sovereign digital money and calling it their own sovereign money, right? So there's the spectrum from nonprofit to profit in terms of organizations, as well as governments, whether at the nation state level or the city level and anywhere in between, you know, we're already engaged with actors all along all those different types of spectrums or dynamics. And so, you know, we've, we've got our first client in terms of Bitcoin Beach Wallet, and we can talk about how we're spinning that out into a for-profit corporation and intend to grow that business. We have many other clients or prospective clients that we're engaged with now. So a little bit of a long-winded context, but I think it's important to, to kind of set that context to help people have a framework to understand what we're trying to do in the world and how the world's going to evolve very differently on open source money in a way that doesn't really have an analogy in the world of traditional banking. So, yeah, I would love for you to talk about how you plan to kind of monetize uh, the Bitcoin Beach wallet. And I'm sure that you've, there's all sorts of like uh, incentives for the community to kind of monetize it. And so I'm sure you have really interesting thoughts on that. So definitely want to hear about that. Yeah, I'll respond to that as well. Keep this one much more brief. I mean, you know, Bitcoin Beach Wallet has been wildly successful, but it's been a volunteer project to this point in time, led by Mike Peterson and Jorge and Shimbera, who've done an amazing job educating people, right? But it's used widely by consumers, you know, Salvadorans in the local market, as well as by merchants. And we've effectively created a, a bank here. And like I said before, that was that's not our intention. That's not our business model. So we're in the process right now of creating a formal corporation in El Salvador where we'll contribute all the assets from the Bitcoin Beach wallet in terms of the brand and the goodwill and the user base and whatnot. Galloy, that, that entity will become a client of Galloy, right? Galloy will continue to support it on a very fulsome basis from a technological perspective. And then you know, our intention is to, to properly capitalize that business, put in place a local Salvadorian executive team. And long story short, make that the number one Bitcoin banking solution in country both for retail consumers as well as businesses and merchants. So that gives you the, the high level overview. That's all very much in process as we speak and happy to unpack any details that you might be keen to explore. Quick question I wanted to ask, and I know this is something I probably should have asked at the beginning, but I think if the people who might be listening, um, it probably would be a good question if they've never come across Galloway or, or, or maybe they haven't heard too much about yourselves and the project. Uh, what, what are your guys' roles within the project? Um, that would be a a good thing i should have started there really but i'm um, so sorry about that but it'd be appreciated if you could uh, explain that because it probably provides a lot more context um doing the code <laughs> i guess is uh, <laughs> the, the large part for now you know now, now it's about going the company but uh, you know on my side it's really uh, making the product and the code yeah i mean Nick, nicholas is being typically modest so i mean he, you know he's ceo and co-founder i mean he's the true visionary here i like to think that i'm a I'm a pretty smart guy, but Nicholas is a, a unique talent, not just in terms of his ability to envision the future, but also build it on a technical basis. So he's certainly leading everything there. And then, you know, quite simply, I'm leading all everything non-technical in the business, whether it relates to capital markets and raising money, 
um, you know, internal finance and operations, legal, HR, you know, business development, sales and marketing. That's all my daily work. Gotcha. Okay. That's cool. And I think um, what you've said about like uh, Bitcoin Beach uh, kind of being your um, first sort of proper showing to the world of what, what can be done um, is pretty good. I mean, because obviously if you look at Bitcoin Beach Wallet, um, it, it works which is uh, much better than Chivo. So, um, you know, I think that's a, that's a pretty good, good showing in itself. Um, so yeah, I understand where you're coming from. I think it's a good, uh, a good demonstration, I guess, to the world of, of what's possible. Um, and I also think like, you know, you can see how it was really about uh, in India, uh, this lady who started like community banks for like local women who can, you know, get any access to banking services. Um, and there's these like local village banks for, for ladies. And they also take men as well, but the idea is for, for ladies in india and um you can see how um <clears throat> then it's instead of banks actually traditional banking services just building up a a kind of uh, bitcoin uh local kind of uh well i mean uh wallet etc that then can turn into its own business potentially or turn to its own sort of profit making machine for the community is is awesome um so yeah i like what you guys are, are doing and and it sounds and, and what it sounds like you're proposing to do as well in the future yeah. I mean, the concept of community banking was very present in the US uh, for the last hundred years, but so it it's disappearing because of the effect of, on fiat money that is very concentrating, you know, forces to the big bank and um, small bank cannot really compete. Um, but I, I believe Bitcoin as a money can change this, and it's uh, if you. It's changing this because now everyone can plug to this ecosystem where you don't need to have a license, you don't need to have this um, all, all this legal requirement as much as for the fiat uh, ecosystem, like where everything is behind permissions. You know, every payment system is permissioned, and um, and and the benefits of a credit union or a community bank is that the money that the user you know, put to this bank like is served to make loan to other people in the community so it's really serving the community right to make the community strive and the fact that those community banks are disappearing you know is that great because then the community aspect like is the bank cannot help you know raise the bar of the community by providing loan to whoever is in this community right now it's like okay you give money to chase but Chase it, make money wherever it's most profitable, like not just helping the local community. That's true. I think it's like then that's a general problem with the fiat money system in, in, in itself. Uh, is that I mean, it's my belief anyway that, that, that the fiat system incentivizes <clears throat> um, success for big business um, and not necessarily small and local communities um, because you know the money gets bled out of the community. And, and, and I mean, if you have a community that's all working in bitcoin accepting bitcoin and has its own wallet and its own kind of bitcoin hearth i guess is the way to put it and then the money's kind of staying within generally within the the area and if anything you're actually pulling in people from outside of the area to come into the area and then like we've seen with bitcoin beach and people have come from far and wide and i'm hoping to be there myself at some point and uh, to see it and spend some some sats there to to buy a, a few beers and whatever and then that's me bringing money into the local area that's hopefully then staying somewhat within the local area um so it's quite quite cool to see how what you're doing is something that's pretty helpful uh, for these local communities and is also profitable too so it's uh, a win-win for everyone i'd say yeah. uh, and fiat encourage you know concentration because if you're too big to fail then you have the backstop of the central bank right so you can take outside risk you don't care like you know that you will be you will get bailed out and if you're a small player that no you don't it's you know it will not have an impact on the economy therefore like you cannot take all those risks so yeah something as well like i guess uh we i touched on it in my intro but it's worth talking about um because it's pretty exciting uh is the adopting bitcoin uh lightning summit conference i think might have the wrong word there i think it's conference uh could be summit but anyway um yeah i how well i mean where, where did the idea come from for this? And please feel free to pitch it to our listeners. I'd, I'd appreciate that. Yeah, so this summer we, in El Salvador, went to meet some companies and banks and we understood that they, they were a bit lost with the Bitcoin law and they don't really understand that the Bitcoin law doesn't mean that they should 
Um, some of the bank were saying, yes, you know, we talked to also Ripple and XRP and maybe that's an interesting solution. And we're like, uh, okay, we need to educate, you know, the country and make sure they understand what Bitcoin means and that there is lightning that is for payment. And, like, um, and so, the, yeah, the idea of the conference is really to bring a lot of the international community working on lightning because it's really, the, you know, it's called a Bitcoin law, but it's really a lightning law. It's really a payment law, right? Like it's uh, the fact that you can use Bitcoin as payment. The store value on Bitcoin is not as much present as the payment part of Bitcoin. And so it's really, you know, the conference is really about lightning. And the goal is to have both the um, uh, international community meets the locals. So it's both useful for international com community because now they can see how Bitcoin is being used as money with Lightning, you know, on the ground, like go to buy a coffee with it and, or do whatever, you know, take a, um, a, a taxi ride or, um, you know, anything should be paid with Lightning now. I mean, I'm sure it's not 100% in the capital. I mean, in, in Azante, that's pretty much the case. In the capital, it's evolving in, in San Salvador. Uh, and the goal is also yeah, to educate the local people on the ground. You know, we try to bring as much you know, people from the local financial institution and you know, large uh, e-commerce uh, and you know, commerce in San Salvador to come to the conference so that can, they can have a, a better idea about what this law is about and how to best you know, integrate Bitcoin and Lightning, basically. Uh, so, I mean, Nicholas and I are planning on, on, you know, building and running Galloway, and we've never organized a conference before, but, you know, for two dynamics, one, like Nicholas said, the fact that, you know, we, we can't stop shitcoiners from trying to convince governments to, to adopt, you know, a different form of payment. We felt it was important to step into the void and at least communicate as much as possible around the benefits of Bitcoin and Lightning. And the second bit is there hasn't been a Lightning conference globally for more than in two years. And so that was the real motivation. You know, we've organized this on short order. We only announced it um, on August 30th. We've got, you know, world-class roster of speakers. So it's happening November 16, 17, and 18, three full days in El Salvador, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, that week. We've got Alex Gladstein from Human Rights Foundation, Alex Leishman from River, Stefan Lavera. I mean, you can go to the website, just world-class roster of speakers. The first food two days are in San Salvador, the capital at the Sheraton Conference Center which is the best hotel conference center um, in the capital. And we'll have two simultaneous tracks, like Nicholas said, one very technically focused, and then a second that's much more focused on real world adoption, not just in El Salvador, but more broadly in Latin America and beyond. And then day three, we're gonna have a great day at the beach in El Zante, where it all began with the Bitcoin Beach Project. That'll be more of a, kind of an open air Bitcoin bazaar with tables and food trucks and vendors set up and then encourage people to spread throughout the town um, you know, engage with merchants who are using Lightning, just see how, you know, this all really came together in the first instance. And then we'll close the event with a sunset barbecue on the beach that Thursday, the 18th, um, also in honor of the taproot activation, which will have taken place by that point in time. And it'll just be a great three days for people to, to learn from each other, learn from the locals, learn from the international community. I think we already have people from more than 30 different countries registered to attend. So it should be a great, great use of time. Yeah, that sounds cool. It's um, kind of like your guys is uh, not PA still as a stance, but, you know, like a big kind of showing, you know, a view, viewing of like, hey, this is something that uh, we've helped um, create and, and make a, a big thing. And uh, it's good to like show off um, the progress that Bitcoin Beach has made and uh, get people into the country and, and get people you know, continuing to be interested in, in Bitcoin in El Salvador and, and, and I guess LATAM in general. Um, so it's pretty cool. I'm uh, looking forward to hopefully visiting. Um, but I, um, yeah, I did, did you guys... are, you all coming, oh, are you all coming to the conference? I am, I will say I'm 99% certain I'll be there. Um, okay. Matt, I, I bought my ticket there. already, so but yeah, I guess. Did you, did you go? So there's obviously, is there, there's another, I've heard there's another conference. I don't actually know, I haven't really looked at it, but I heard there's another conference around the same time. Uh, which if there is, it reminds me of the old, um, wrestling uh, monday night wars back in the day um, and it's wb versus wcw uh is, is this uh is this uh is this the case is there another one ongoing and i guess like if so did you guys were you who, who was first and and was this like a purposeful you know wrestling uh attack on each other yeah so we we've got good lines of communication and a nice rapport with rodolfo who's the organizer of blob bitcom right which is the oldest bitcoin conference in latin america which he's been putting on through since 2013 and R rodolfo is great you know we did um 
you know, we announced our dates, you know, November 16th through 18th, you know, Rodolfo, I think was originally planning to do something in December. And then long story short, he shifted it to be the same week as ours. There's a little bit of overlap. Um, so, you know, we're, we're trying to make the best of the situation, turn it into a, a Bitcoin week. You know, I'll, even though I speak to Rodolfo regularly, I'm still not clear exactly what's happening and what's not happening with his event. Um, so, you know, there, they are two separate events. We certainly encourage people to come to El Salvador and spend as much time as possible. And if you want to attend um, both events, Rodolfo has tried to make it a bit respectful where he's put the two main conference days for his event on Thursday, Friday. Like I said, our main event days were previously scheduled to be Tuesday, Wednesday with the beach day on Thursday. So come one, come all, we'd love to see you. That's cool. I uh, I get that. It's uh, so it's less of a it's less of a exciting uh, brawl and more of a hey look let's just everyone come to El Salvador and uh, there's there's two things going on so it's definitely worth your time being here and uh, to get all Bitcoined up and then you'll probably need a, a week's holiday after to forget about Bitcoin because you'll have been so Bitcoined. I know Bitrefill's uh, working towards creating a presence in El Salvador and establishing themselves. Have you seen a lot of other uh, companies from outside of El Salvador uh, set up shop there? Yeah, Strike, I guess, is uh, have a company. Uh, also, it's not clear if they're really focusing on El Salvador at this point. Um, there is Ibex, that is a company from, I believe, Guatemala. Uh, Chris, is that correct? Yeah, they're the Ibex. Ibex team is in from Guatemala, obviously open, Guatemala. and Ibex is open uh, Ibex is doing. Yeah, I was just going to say Ibex is doing great work supporting Starbucks and Pizza Hut and KFC and some international chains like that. Open nodes, you know, working with McDonald's and whatnot. So, you know, I, I think there's a, a small number, but you know, certainly high quality firms that, in addition to ourselves, are really trying to make Bitcoin really useful for people on a day to day basis. I know Paxful spent a lot of time in El Salvador as well. I don't. I don't know if they're setting up shop there, but I, I know that they uh, put a lot of hours in talking to merchants, figuring out, uh, and they're actually really good at creating user interfaces for people who aren't super technical and stuff like that. So my last question is, is the volcano mining actually happening? It's a good <laughs> question. <laughs> I, think, I think you guys know as much as us on, on that from my primary source of info for the volcano mining is Twitter. So I, I don't have a, a better insight beyond that. Uh, they have plenty of free energy, but uh, you need both free energy and for it to be very cold. And El Salvador obviously doesn't have that. So it might be, might be like a, a bit of a meme because I think maybe they just don't have the weather that's suited for it. Although maybe up at those volcanoes, it does cool off at that elevation. I don't know. But that's just what I heard. I mean, I, I'm not going to start a rumor right now, but I heard the reason why Chris's mic, his camera isn't on is because he's actually inside one of the volcanoes right now. And hey, uh, I, I said I'm not starting rumors, but um, <laughs> it could be. Uh, I, I, could... I will. I, I will neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> that's the uh, Galloway volcanoes um but no i uh is there was there anything else you wanted to ask matt by the way yeah, i don't want to wrap up too early so pre pre galoy coming to el zante uh you know the the economy there was like in, in terms of people transacting and storing their net worth i assume it was like mostly cash and most of the citizens you know i don't know maybe they don't really have much of a savings account to speak of uh, given the socioeconomic level. Uh, so I assume that's maybe how it was going before, but then what, what is, has there been like a true trans transition to some sort of like, do you think uh, the people are starting to denominate a little more of their wealth in Bitcoin or do they just strictly use it for transactions? Um, how common is actual like cash dollars still in El Zante, like, are they still like, maybe they do Bitcoin purchases when they get like, uh, you know, some sort of Bitcoin payment, they have to offload their Bitcoin or, you know, so like, uh, has the composition of the average person in El Zante, has their composition of their net worth, has it transitioned into Bitcoin um, or is it still kind of a novelty to them? Uh, I don't think people think about that net worth, you know, as you might be thinking about it, you know, like in a developed country, it's important to put back things into context that if you live on cash, you know, maybe you live day to day and like, um, so you get paid $20 per day and you spend it and that's it. And you maybe have one day of cash of reserve, right? So um, the, the 
first concept of saving, like I believe is something that they have the option now with Bitcoin because prior to that, if you just have cash, um, the issue with, with fiat is that sure, you can keep your cash, but if you have no way to invest it, like you, you know, your, your cash is being devalued and you have an incentive to not store it under your mattress, but spend it. Um, and so I believe what Bitcoin bring to those people is the uh, idea of savings, right? Which um, is definitively not something they had the option before, which is quite, I mean, awesome for this community. Um, I don't think there is a lot of population that thinks of their wealth in Bitcoin. <laughs> like, I think it's, you know, like it's a concept that is for people that have been in the Bitcoin space for a long time and that have, you know, a lot of excess saving and, you know, maybe they start to think that way. But if you go to El Salvador, you know, the price are in, in dollar, um, basically the wallet will automatically convert how many sets you need to spend to pay this, you know, invoice of $10 or $100. Um, I mean, I, I guess it might change, you know, keep in mind the law has been here for only a couple of months and, you know, in, in the... Bitcoin Beach project starts about two years ago. So, right. I mean, things might change, but it, it's so, I mean, when you will go to El Salvador for the conference, you will really, really realize that in El Zante, when things started, there is no infrastructure, right? The wood, are, you know, made with dirt and like, you know, a lot of house are not really house, you know, but they are just like some wall and some roof, but um, like, yeah, it, it, it's hard to understand the, where people come from, uh, and the fact that how we think about wealth, you know, for them, is a concept that is not even in their mind, right? Uh, basically. Are there any other uh, like small communities within El Salvador that have kind of followed and tried to emulate uh, what they're doing in Big? I mean, we we've met, you know, for example, you know, we've been hosting meetups now, and at, at some of the meetups, I've Bitcoin meetups, and I, I've met some members just kind of coincidentally from other communities who are trying to get a few things going you know i think one thing that's worth highlighting that's kind of from the outside in is jorge and chimbera who are the two guys you know, from el zante who have just been like they're, they're the true heroes of the story right because they're the ones who over the last two years have done literally the one-on-one -on -one education with thousands of people right to explain to them like look this is what bitcoin is this is what you want to download on your phone in terms of the app. This is how you use it. This is not a scam, right? None of this would have happened without them. And I want to mention that tying back to your question and so much as that they've gone and they, they still to this day are going to new communities every week and educating people, you know, a couple dozen at a time, right? And it's taking an entire day each time in order to do that education. So the word is spreading, you know, people are certainly using the Bitcoin Beach wallet much more widely than just in El Zante itself. But it's, I think, more from a, a, a thrust from Bora and Chimbera and all the educational outreach that they're doing, more so than other people just kind of voluntarily taking up the mantle themselves, at least from what I said. I guess the final question that's popped to my mind, actually, is like, hey, um, where do you, uh, well, well, this time next year, uh, where do you see uh, you guys, what, where do you see you guys, what do you see you guys doing and, and what do you see Galoy doing as a, as, a, as a project or a company? I mean, the goal is to, you know, have as many country or community as possible running on Bitcoin. So uh, I guess this is our KPI, right? Um, we have one country converted to the Bitcoin standard. We have, I don't know, 180 something left. So we have, yeah, a lot of work. <laughs> any, any clues on which one's next or is that a uh, secret information? I, I can share that uh, definitely Latin America and Africa are two of the, uh, I guess, continent where we, see the most value for bitcoin frankly so yeah i mean I'll, I'll be a bit i'll be a bit cheeky here and get a little more specific i mean number one to your question i mean our goal is a year from now to be supporting probably a couple dozen communities companies or governments in terms of having onboarded to bitcoin through our solution right again we don't want to be the bank we want to make it easy for people to do that they don't you don't need to use us our we're exceptional to a lot of the other companies in the space and so much as that we're free and open source software that said, we've got a lot of experience running nodes and, you know, making, you know, ensuring liquidity on channels and whatnot, where you probably need some of our help, but you can just implement what we've built without us, right? 
and then tying it all together, you know, on the government side, you know, we've had conversations with people in the government of Colombia and, you know, Rwanda, and like, there's, there's real countries here, right? Countries that are much more sizable than El Salvador in terms of population, as well as GDP. And, you know, certainly no guarantee in terms of how this evolves, but, you know, these are real nation states that are having the, the dialogue right now. So it should be exciting times ahead. That sounds awesome. I appreciate uh, you guys giving us that little sort of, uh, had a bit of information, um, which gives some excitement to people uh, who are listening to the, the final bit of this podcast. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I appreciate uh, both of you taking your time to, uh, to come on here and, and talk to us uh, and give us some, some insight into the project, why, how, what we're up to and the future. Um, it's really interesting. And also it's good to hear about the uh, Adopting Bitcoin uh, conference, which is happening on November the 16th to November the 18th, just in case anyone's uh, forgotten the dates uh, in El Salvador. Okay, I've forgotten the location. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's been awesome. Hunter, did you cover everything that you wanted to cover or was there something else that you wanted to speak on? Because uh, I remember you mentioned a little something at the beginning before we started recording, but I, I, I kind of, uh, I wasn't exactly sure what you were saying, but um, just want to make sure that, uh, you know, did you say your piece uh, completely? Yeah, I mean, that, that ties to the last question in terms of where we want to be in a year. I mean, what I was alluding to is we're spinning out the Bitcoin Beach Wallet into a for-profit corporation that'll be a client of Galloy. We want that to be the number one Bitcoin banking solution in country. A year from now, there's no reason why it can't be, both in terms of serving retail consumers to send and receive Bitcoin, to enable savings for them, you know, to enable them to easily spend Bitcoin all around the country. And at the same time, you know, we have a vision for you know, broad merchant adoption and, and commercial use as well. And so we're moving forward full steam ahead and we'll, you know, that'll be a great client for us as well as, you know, hopefully many clients in many other countries around the world. Uh, I just want to say, like, I'm super excited to come to this conference, um, more so than any other Bitcoin conference I've been to. Uh, so I, I'm super excited. And like you said, there really are a ton of all stars going to this uh, really smart and capable people. So it, it's it's going to be great. I know it. Yeah, I, I can definitely agree to that one because I, I usually am feeling a little bit sort of uh, about Bitcoin conferences because I often feel like it's going to be, you get the ones where they're like, oh, there's 21 million and uh, it's really fast and it's you know, lightning fast. Even And they're talking about main chain Bitcoin. You think, oh, this is not my kind of conference. You get some of those, especially in like uh, Latin America. But this actually sounds like a, a good conference that's not full of kind of ego touting and, and and sort of rubbish um so i'm pretty uh, excited as well uh, so i can definitely agree with what matt just said um thank you for for joining us both of you and uh it's much appreciated on our end and uh for everyone out there listening as well we appreciate you have a wonderful uh, day week hour year and uh, wherever you are uh, enjoy listening and uh, keep being happy lots of love mm-hmm.